Control tools and techniques help managers pinpoint the organizational strengths and weaknesses on which useful control strategy focus. So, ano po ba yung tools and techniques? A tool is a specific tangible item such as a template or software program used in performing an activity to produce a product or result. Ang example po niya na any software program like Google Forms, Google Meets. Sa Excel naman po, pwede din siya kasi meron po dong provided na format na po for billing statement, sales report, and pwede din po yata yung time card. So, yun po yung ilan sa mga example ng mga template or software program. So, a, a technique naman po is a defined systematic procedure to produce one or more outputs which may also use one or more tool. So, ito na po yung parang procedure or yung pinagsama-sama pong uh, processes para po para po makaproduce maka, maka ng isang output po. So, proper use of controlling techniques helps an organization to survive in the highly changing economic world. Every organization has to cope with changes in the environment. New products or technologies emerge Government regulations are too often amended or enacted, and competitors change their strategies. So, ang example po natin ngayon dyan is yung nangyayari pong pandemic sa atin ngayon. So, napakalaking epekto po nito sa economic status po ng ating bansa, o, at hindi lang po ng ating bansa, kundi po ng buong mundo. So, there are five common control tools and techniques. First, project management and control. Second, inventory control. Third, break-even analysis. Fourth, financial controls. And last is the balance scorecards. So let's proceed to the project management and control. Projects are one-time activities with many components, tasks that must be completed in proper order and according to budget. So the project daw po is it might be something personal. For example, po is anniversary parties, birthday parties, fundraising, and any uh, any activity po na merong nakaset na goals or objectives na may kasamang mga plans or activities po para po ma, ma, magawa or ma-complete yung isang activity. So, Ano po ba yung pinagkakatulad ng mga example na sinabi ko kanina like yung fundraising, birthdays and anniversary, they they have they share in common po na we're in they encompass relatively complicated sets of interrelated tasks with multiple components that have to happen in a certain sequence and that must be completed by a specified date. So may mga target date po siya and may mga process or di kaya may mga activities na dapat sundin or, or di kay may process na may pagkakakasunod-sunod. So, yun po. Um, project management is the responsibility for overall planning, supervision, and control of projects. So, pag nagpumasok po ang project management, nandito po si project manager. So, ano po bang trabaho ni project manager? A project manager's job is to ensure that a project is well-planned and then completed according to plan on time within budget, and consistent with the objective. So, dapat po laging nai-insure na yung activity na ginagawa is laging naka-align po sa objectives ng isang organization. So, there are two useful techniques po under ng project management and control. Ito po yung gun chart and the CPM or PERT. So, Ito po, konti pong trivia about gun chart. First gun chart was devised in the mid-1890s by Karl Adamitsky, a Polish engineer who ran a steelworks in southern Poland. So 15 years after Adamitsky, Henry Gunn, an American engineer and project management consultant, devised his own version of the chart and it was this that became widely known and popular in Western countries. So gun chart is a chart graphically displays the scheduling of tasks required to complete a project. <coughs> Excuse me po. So, makikita po dito sa figure po na pinakita ko, ah, nakalatag po yung mga activities na dapat gawin, yung pagkakasunod-sunod po ng activities. And then, nandito po yung mga days 
or weeks and yung month kung kailan po matatapos yung isang project. So, kung baga meron pong nakalaan na, na time or panahon sa kada activity po kung kailan siya matatapos. Next po, uh, CPM means Critical Path Method. It was developed in the late 1950s. CPM or Critical Path Method is an algorithm used for planning, scheduling, coordination, and control of activities in a project. While PART means Project Evaluation and Review Technique. It was also developed in the late 1950s. So, magkasabay po siyang na-develop ng CPM. So, PERT or Project Evaluation and Review Technique studies and represents the task undertaken to complete a project to identify the least time for completing a task and the minimum time required to complete the whole project. So, CPM or PERT is a combination of the critical path method and the program evaluation and review technique. So, dito po sa figure naman na to, makikita po yung tick arrow. Siya po yung tinatawag na critical path wherein limited po yung days, uh, kumbaga ay maunti po yung days na makukonsume para po ma-finish itong project. So, kung makikita po natin, there are 15, 25, 30, 38 days para po matapos yung isang project. Well, pagdating naman po sa PERT or Program Evaluation and Review Technology, technique, ito pong mga teen arrows, makikita po na detailed siya. Uh, Kung baga yung bawat activity is detalyado and nakastate yung ilang days siya gagawin. So, siya po ay mahaba. Kung baga ay 10, 14, 20, 32, 36, uh, 32, 34, 36, 44, 45 days siya gagawin. So, makikita po yung deperensya ng araw kapag titingnan sa program evaluation and review technique at saka po yung critical path method. Second, um, inventory control. So, inventory is the accounting of items, component, parts, raw materials a company uses in production or sales. The verb inventory refers to the act of counting or listing items. As an accounting term, inventory refers to all stock in the various production stages and is a current asset. So, there are two forms of inventory control po. First is the economic order quantity. Automatically orders a fixed number of items every time an inventory level falls to predetermined point. So, ang example po natin dyan is yung mga grocery stores. Kasi kadalasan po dyan may raong mabilis ang, uh, kung mabilis maubos yung isang item or products. Uh, for example po, si company A is nagkakaroon ng reorder point every, uh, for example, yung pong coffee product nila is ma-reach yung 10 boxes, yung minimum inventory nila. Pag umabot na po sila sa 10 boxes, doon na po sila ulit mag o order ng bagong item para para po mag uh, uh, ma, dumami po uli yung stock nila for the next ano po, for the next month. So, yung just-in-time scheduling naman po or GIT uh, popular approach to inventory control. Uh, routes material to workstation just-in-time. So, ito po yung inventory na we're in um, nag uh, nagpo-purchase po sila ng item based on the needs or urgency nung mga bagay na yun. Um, example po sa amin sa Department of Education po, specifically sa school po na we're in naka-assign ako, nagpo-purchase lang po kami ng mga item depende po sa pangangailangan ng school. Uh, for example, yung na-purchase po namin this month is yung sa drum set po ng Xerox machine. So, yun po hindi naman siya usually usually uh, uh, nagig, nasisira. Kung baga ay kung kailan lang masira or kailan lang need yung item na yun, dun lang po nag-purchase. So, the third common control tools and technique is the break-even analysis. Break-even analysis performs what-if calculations under different revenue and cost conditions. Break-even point in economics 
business and specifically cost accounting is the point at which total cost and total revenue are equal or is specifically even. So, ito po yung nasa baba. Total cost is equals to total revenue. So, ito po yung formula. Break-even point is equals to fixed cost divided by price less variable cost. So, sa graph po, the yellow line represents the total cost and the green line represents the revenue. So, po yung intersection ng yellow line and green line, yun po yung tinatawag na break-even point. So, pag sinabing break-even point, hindi ka po lugi, hindi ka rin po kumita. So, bakit bakit ba mahalaga po yung break-even point na malaman? Kasi para po uh, makasabay po tayo sa pabago-bagong economic status ng bansa, especially po pagdating sa demand and supply chain, uh, na kung saan minsan tumataas ang demand, bumababa ang supply, uh, tumataas ang presyo ng langis, tumataas ang, ang, ang kuryente. So, Break-even point po is wherein, for example, um, ang target ng company is to produce ng madami. Ito po, sales or unit na tinatawag, mag-produce ng madami. So, nandito siya. Ngayon, kabiglang, kasi hindi man po yung item, kaya sila nag-produce nag ng madami. Kaso, dumating yung point na hindi na siya ganun ka-demand. So, kung hindi nila yun mabibenta, malulugi sila. So, para lang kumbaga makabawi po sila, kailangan nilang hanapin yung break-even point. Kumbaga, kung madami po silang na-produce na product, hahanapan nila yung price na kung saan aangkop or magiging uh, mapibenta pa rin nila or ma ma magiging demand pa rin sa mga customer nila yung item in a low price po. Kumbaga ay mas Uh, mabebenta nila yung product in a low price pero hindi sila kikita. Kung bagay, sapat lang para po yung, yung mapapagbenta ng mga product na yon is i-occupy yung mga naging puhunan nila or naging expenses po ng company nila. So, fourth is financial control. Financial control are procedures, policies, and means by which an organization monitors and controls the direction, allocation, and use 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 and usage of its financial resources. Financial controls play an important role in ensuring the accuracy of reporting, eliminating fraud, and protecting the organization's resources, both physical and intangible. So, meron pong uh, under ng financial control ang balance sheet po. Shows assets and liabilities at one point in time. So, ang balance sheet po ay pinapakita that assets is equal to liabilities and equity. So, ang balance sheet po is ginagawa year-end. Kung baga ay pag patapos na po ang taon. So, dito po makikita, pag sinabing asset, under po ng asset is cash, uh, inventory, and um, mga sales po ng company if uh, sa production po sila. Well, sa liabilities and equity naman po, nandito po yung mga debt yung mga pagkakautang, yung mga share, shareholders equity, yung mga investment po naman. Other one po naman ay yung income statement. Shows profits or losses at one point in time. So, income statement po is normally ginagawa siya monthly para po makita ng isang company or organization kung kumikita ba sila or hindi. Para magkaroon po sila ng idea na ah, kapag ganitong buwan pala, mahina yung yung sales natin, ano yung pwede nilang gawin? Kung baga na-identify nila yung mga weaknesses nila, gamit po ang income statement. So, meron pong financial ratios under po ng financial control. Um, una po is profitability. Measures ability to earn revenues greater than cost. Ito po yung ability to use its resources to generate revenues in excess of its expenses. So, the higher, the better po dito. Kung baga, ah, lumalaki po yung kita mo kasabay ng paglaki ng sales at saka ng mga assets po ng isang kumpanya. Ah, kung baga, halimbawa po, meron ka po palang machine na meron pong na-purchase ang inyong company na machine na we're in. Pwede pala siyang gamitin sa ganitong, ah, sa other activity, hindi lang dun sa specific 
specific na function niya, pwede pala siyang gamitin dun sa, bo, sa production ng isang bagay para mas mapabilis yung pag-produce. So, yun po yung tinatawag na profitability. So, next naman po is liquidity. Measures ability to meet short-term obligations. Ito po yung ease with which an asset or security can be converted into ready cash. Uh, ang example po dito, for example, may mga uh, facilities or equipments po sa isang organization na well-functioned pa naman, pwede pa naman siyang gamitin, pero dahil nag-upgrade or bumili ng mas, mas maganda at mas mabilis na gamit, pwede po nila yun ibenta para po mag-generate ng cash. So, yun po yung additional um, asset po sa organization. So, ito din po ay the higher, the better din po. So, leverage measures use of debt. So, ito po, it refers to the use of debt or borrowed borrowed funds from an investment or project. So, ito naman po'y kabaliktara ng dalawa. Kung baga, the lower is the better. Kasi sino naman pong organization ang mas pipiliin na mas malaki yung utang nila kumpara sa mga assets na meron sila. And last is the asset management, measure asset and inventory efficiency. So, pag sinabing asset management, ito naman po ay tumutukoy sa dami ng sales alinsabay ng pagtaas din po ng assets and inventory. So, the higher, the better din po pagdating sa asset management. So, last, control tools and techniques is the balance scorecard. So, from the terms na scorecard, so, ibig sabihin parang nire-rate or nilalagyan ng corresponding scores yung isang bagay. So, balance scorecard, tallies organizational performance in financial customer service, internal process, and innovation, and learning areas. So, it was originally developed by Dr. Robert Kaplan of Harvard University and Dr. David Norton as a framework for measuring organizational performance using a more balanced set of performance measures. So, developing a balanced scorecard for any organization begins with the clarification of the organization mission and vision. So, ito po, itong apat po na nakastate yung financial performance, customer satisfaction, internal process improvement, innovation and learning. Yan po yung four uh, uh, areas ng organization na dapat binibigyang pansin. Uh, for example po, sa financial performance, dapat nasasagot po yung tanong na how well do our actions directly contribute to improve financial performance? To improve financially, how should we appear to our shareholders? Kumbaga, uh, dito po pinapakita na uh, financially su sustainable ba ang organization na meron kami para makaakit kami ng more investors or para makaakit kami ng mga uh, gustong mag uh, mag uh, yun, mag-invest dun po sa company namin. So, next is customer satisfaction. Ang sinasagot naman po nito is how well do we serve our customers and clients? To achieve our vision, how should we appear to our customer? So, dapat po, syempre, kung uh, mapa-organization, uh, mapa-businessman po yan or government, dapat inaalam natin yung customer satisfaction natin. Natutuwa pa ba sila sa uh, pagbibigay natin ng serbisyo sa kanila? Or kung sa tindahan naman, natutuwa pa ba sila sa mga products na ibenebenta natin sa kanila? So, third is internal process improvement. So, sinasagot naman niya po yung tanong na how well do our do our activities and processes directly increase the value we provide our customers and clients? To satisfy our customers and shareholders, what internal business processes should we excel? So, kumbaga, ano pa po ba yung mga uh, pamamaraan na kailangan natin gawin para mas masatisfy natin yung mga customers? So, ito po yung tumutukoy na sa lahat ng mga procedures and processes na meron po sa isang organization. So, last, innovation and learning. Sinasagot naman po nito yung mga tanong na how well are we learning, changing, and improving things over time? To achieve our vision, how will we sustain our ability to change and improve? So, nandito na po yung pagsabing innovation, yun yung 
uh, pag-upgrade ng mga technologies para po sa uh, mabilis na production or halimbawa ay like tulad po ngayong pandemic so more on more on technologies na po tayo nakaasa so uh, more on online transaction so yun po itinatawag na innovation and then learning uh, dapat po yung mga staff is uh, nagkakaroon sila ng mga training capabilities para po mas ma-enhance nila yung kanilang mga ability at saka uh, mga mga skills na meron na po sila kasi uh, alam po naman natin na human resource is very important po pagdating sa kahit anong organization, mapapublic, private, or business man yan. Human resource is very important po kasi sila yung gumagalaw sa isang organization. So, yun lang po. And before po, may iwan na po ako isang quotation, expect the best, plan for the worst, and prepare to be surprised. So, para po sa akin, na opinion ko lang, nakarelate po siya dun sa topic na diniscuss ko ngayon kasi tama naman po na dapat lagi tayo nagpaplano and prepare sa anumang bagay po na mangyayari sa atin. So, yun lang po and thank you.